Good evening, friends. I'm just going to invite you, if you could, would you stand, please? Could you stand just for a second? <laughs> and I, I, just, I just want to invite you, just in the moments that I have with, this, with you this evening, I, just, I really want to invite you to be very attentive to what happens within you. Because what happens within you this evening is very important. So I just want to give you just a few moments of space just to kind of begin to notice what's going on. So I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath all the way in. Just breathe all the way out. And let's just take another deep breath all the way in and all the way out. I'm just going to invite you just for a couple moments of just total silence. Jesus, I pray that you would speak to us this evening, speak to us in the depths of our hearts. Jesus, come and heal us, heal our misery. Bring our deepest desires to life, Lord. Fill us with your love. Come, Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. I pray that our hearts would be open to receive you, Lord, in a new way. We ask you, Mother Mary, you who are so beautiful, Mama, I pray that you would come and wrap your mantle, sing your song of love around each one of us. And we commend this time to you as we pray, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may have a seat. So as I was thinking about you this evening and kind of delving into the places where we're going to go, we're going to talk about the cross. And I love that they brought a cross up here so we could actually talk about it. It's important as we kind of journey in this place, and why I asked you to kind of think about and to notice what's happening in your heart is because just like you, I was thinking this evening and just this week that we've been together that for a lot of us, we've heard a lot of these things before. And there are things that I'm going to share with you this evening that you've heard before. And I think a lot of times we can agree that there are intellectual truths that are very beautiful, and we want to receive them, and some we do, but some of the most beautiful truths about our faith, about the love that Jesus had for, has for us, some of them penetrate us very deeply, and then some of them just ricochet off our hearts. And why is that? I asked myself that same question. Why, why are there certain things that I can receive so deeply? And then many times I hear about the love of the Lord and I want to receive it, but I can't. And so when we talk about things about Jesus dying for us, and we talk about our faith and just the beauty of who Christ is, it's very easy if we're not attentive to begin to resist actually his love song. And it's so beautiful that Bishop Conley in his wonderful homily this morning, he quoted St. Augustine when he said, only the lover sings. So tonight we're gonna to talk about the song and why is it that, what did Jesus do for you and I? And why did he die for us? And I was just kind of plumbing the beautiful depths of our faith that people much more intelligent than I have, have plumbed. And one of the most beautiful you know, works of our faith is the Summa. And St. Thomas Aquinas actually treats this very question. So he's asked whether there was any more suitable way, very interesting question, where there, whether there was any more suitable way of delivering the human race than by Christ's passion. And the objections that he's given is, could not have God done it by his divine will? Couldn't have he vanquished the enemy by power? Did Jesus have to die a violent death? Why is it that Christ died the way he did? And what difference does it make to you and I? And after kind of naming out these objections, it's so wonderful. He says, on the contrary, St. Thomas Aquinas says, on the contrary, St. Augustine says, there was, no more, there was no other more suitable way of healing our misery than the passion of Jesus Christ. There was no other more suitable way of healing our misery than the passion of Jesus Christ. And he says, yes, it's so that we are evoked in a deep love song with the Lord. That as we see his gift to us and we receive his gift to us, that we respond in that love. And because humanity has such a great dignity, there was no other more suitable way of, of healing our misery than Christ's love for us. And where in your life would you like Jesus to come and heal your misery? <laughs> and when we start to go down these paths, we start to think about ourselves and our journey and why we're here. And anybody who's done any sort of introspection or suffered at all in life has asked the question, or if you know somebody who has, you've, you've asked the question, why, why is there suffering? Why, why, if God is so good, why is there suffering? And, and why would Jesus do this? And in a very beautiful work that I've come across recently by Pope Benedict, it's a, it's a collection of talks that he gave called Principles on Catholic Theology. And he says this, and he's, taking, he's speaking about you and I, and he says, if an individual is to accept himself, Someone must say to him, it is good that you exist. 
And he must say it not with words, but with that act of the entire being that we call love. For it is the way of love to will the other's existence and at the same time to bring that existence forth. The key to the eye lies with the thou, and the way to the thou leads through the eye. That you and I know that we're loved when somebody comes into our life and says, it is good that we exist. And can I just tell you, I have the best seat in the house right now. (laughs) I just wanna tell you that it is good that you exist. It is good that you exist. You, just as you are. Not that you, the person you want to be or the the way you wish you were or the things that you wish would have never happened or the things you can't wait to happen. The person that you exist now, it is good that you exist. And we've all asked that question, is it really? Is it really good that I exist? And one of the reasons why the cross will always be such an eloquent poetry of God's love song that Jesus Christ is the bridegroom and he's the singer of the song of songs. And he is singing the melody that brings everything into creation, that sustains everything, and that brings your heart to life, and that comes to heal our misery. And Pope Benedict, as beautiful and intelligent as a man that he was, and just so lovely, lovely, beautiful man, he actually goes into this very place with us. He says, we come now, it's so lovely, we come now to the all-important question. And maybe you're pondering this yourself. He says, is it true then? Is it true? When someone says to me, it is good that you exist, is it really good? Is it not possible that a person's love which wills my existence is just a tragic error? (laughs) Is it really good? And have you ever wondered that? Have you ever wondered of the people that really love you in your life, do they really know you? And is it really good that you exist? And when you and I think about the song of songs and and the song of the bridegroom, the song of the lover, it is only the lover that sings and the song that Jesus sings over you and I. And when we hear it, I would say that the lover is the one who sings, the lover is the only one who sings the authentic song. And when you hear the authentic song, which is what you've been hearing, especially these last few days, there are places in your heart that just come to life. And you say to yourself, I wanna wanna hear more about that. You're like, I know that. It's like at Thanksgiving when you get a whiff of your grandma's apple pie. You're like, man, I've been waiting a long time for this. Like, I want to know more of that. I just want more. And then yet, like we said, for all of us, there's a place where it just kind of ricochets off. And as I was praying about that, and I was praying about you and just my own journey, actually, Jesus actually put you guys on my heart, on the solemnity of the sacred heart of Jesus. And I was sitting in the back of a chapel, minding my own business. Like, I love y'all, but I wasn't thinking about you yet, you know? And I, I was just saying that all of a sudden, the Lord said, no, you're going to start praying for them. You're gonna start praying for them. And so what's happening in our heart when we hear the song of the bridegroom, this beautiful captivating song that brings existence into life and, and, and heals our hearts and heals our misery, what is something else that's going on? And as I prayed about it and I really pondered it, what I realized, and you know this very well, and this is just one way of kind of stating this, that there's a competing song happening, and it's not competing in its in totality because it can't, because it's, a much, it's diminished, it's, it's discordant from the original melody, the original harmony. But it's not the song of songs, it's a siren song. (laughs) If you study Greek mythology, you know what a siren, a siren, you see it in in Homer's Odyssey, that a siren is a a woman who's like half woman, half bird, sometimes she's depicted as a mermaid, but she's along the rocky shores of the island and her song that she sings is so seductive that the sailors cannot resist her song. And as she lures them to the shore, their boats crash upon the rocky island rocks and the, the, the boat breaks and the sailors drown. As a complete aside, can I just say this to you? Did you know that Starbucks logo, do you know what's inside that little circle? It's a siren. Okay, I just want to tell you that. You can never unknow that. That little green circle. That's why you spent two hours in Starbucks. I saw you all this morning. You spent two hours at Starbucks and you spent eight bucks and a cup of coffee. You're like, ugh, dashed upon the rocks of sweet caffeinated goodness. That's what happened this morning, okay? It's a siren, right? That's why we're all doing that. You want to put beeswax in your ears like Odysseus. You're like, I don't want to, I don't want to hear her song, but I'm back again. Here we are. I'll see you there tomorrow. So, it's like, ugh, she gets us. But a siren song is very seductive, and you know, it's typically associated with lust, with, with the, the beauty that doesn't heal, the beauty that doesn't give life, but the beauty that destroys, which is a, is, a, is a deep devastation of beauty. But it would be too easy. It would be too easy if that was the only melody that the siren song sung. Because for some of us, that is the song that we hear. But for others of us, hmm, maybe the siren song says something like this, you're all alone. <laughs> 
And nobody loves you. And nobody cares about you. And nobody sees you. And you're a burden. And it is not good that you exist. And you shouldn't be here. And this whole thing's a joke. This is you just telling yourself nice things. And you know the interesting thing that happens is many times we take that song on our own and we begin to sing that song to ourselves. And we say things like, I'm, I'm not lovable and there's no way that God could ever love me and there's no way that what Christ did for me could ever have anything to do with the deep levels of my heart. I might profess it on Sundays, but it doesn't affect my daily life. And we take that siren song and we begin to sing it ourselves. And what Jesus does, my dear friends, when he taught, when St. Augustine speaking about healing or misery, what Jesus does, Jesus doesn't come just to sing a louder song. His song is what vanquishes the darkness. The song of songs is a song that's sung over us that Christ comes to give the gift of himself, that he pours out his life, that he spares nothing, that he has taken everything in your life and he's united it to him. There is no portion of your life he's not familiar with. There's no portion of your life that he doesn't want to sing into beauty. There's no misery in your life that he hasn't already reached in with the tenderness of his love and just wrapped it in his beautiful hands and his beautiful heart and wants to bring you home. The enemy sings a siren song. Jesus sings a song of songs. And he's coming for you. And his heart is for you. Isn't it the same song that Mary sings? <laughs> Isn't that what we celebrate in the feast day of Our Lady of Guadalupe? When she encounters Juan Diego, and Juan Diego is just like all of us, you know. And you know, his uncle's sick, and he's, you know, he's trying to go around the mountain, and she intercepts him. She's just so beautiful. She just intercepts him, and she looks at him, and she's like, Juanito, what are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? What are you, what are you worried about? Am I not here who I'm your mother? What are you afraid of? You don't have to worry. You don't have to be afraid. Are you not here in the fold of my arms? Are you not here? What do you have to worry about? And she sings her beautiful song as the bride and a mother. And this is our faith. And when Jesus comes to reveal the truth of his love completely poured out for you and I, that he holds nothing back from you and I, and that he desires to bring to himself everything in your life that you wish to give to him, and so even now, you might be in your heart saying, you might be experiencing a bit of the competition between the song and the siren, <laughs> the song and the siren. And this evening, as we spend time in front of the Lord Jesus, the bridegroom, the one who on the cross, as we read in the letter to the Hebrews, that it says, for the joy set before him, for the joy set before him that Jesus endures the cross, despising its shame. And he does that for you and I, you know, he's not embarrassed of you. Jesus is not embarrassed of you. And he knows you and he sees you and he loves you and he says it is, it is good that you exist. So much so, Pope Benedict is going to go on to say, he says it's, it's obvious however that this, this simple act of even liking myself, of being at one with myself actually raises the question of the whole universe. It raises the question of truth, is it good that I exist? Is it good that anything at all exists? Is it good that the world exists? Because love alone is of no avail, it, so it serves no purpose if truth is not on its side, and only when truth and love are in harmony can man know joy, for it is truth that makes him free. And see, this is where the Lord is inviting us into the truth. And, and this is the response that you and I all are invited to give. That little by little in our life, when we find ourselves coming into agreement with the siren song that has come into the deepest places of our wounds, things that we keep so deeply hidden in our life, things that we hope nobody will ever find out, that when we allow the song of songs to come into the places that we've taken on a different melody, that Jesus comes in the symphony of his love to bring it into truth and goodness and beauty. And my dear friends, this is why truth and goodness and beauty will always captivate us. And this is the good news. This is the good news that wherever you find yourself this evening, Christ as the bridegroom is singing his song of songs over you and he's intensely interested in every detail of your life. Intensely so. To finish, Pope Benedict, in a stunning, 
end of this letter, he says, the contra and a Christian good news, the Evangelium reads this, that God finds man so important that he himself has suffered for man, that the cross is in truth the center of the Evangelium, the good news, that it is good that you exist, and not even just that, that it is necessary that you exist. The cross is the approbation of our existence, not in words, but in an act so completely radical that it caused God to become flesh and pierce his flesh to the quick. That is, to God, it was worth the death of his only son. When one is loved in truth unto death, such a one knows that he is truly loved. And if God so loves us, then we are loved in truth. Then love is truth and truth is love and then life is worth living. This is the evangelium, this is the good news. It is the good news that you exist and that I exist and that God will never, ever, ever stop coming for us and stop singing his song of the bridegroom of the song of songs. He will never stop. It's an affirmation of the deepest goodness of you. So tonight, maybe for all of us, myself included, we could allow the Lord to reveal the places perhaps we have grasped onto a different melody even in the smallest way, the smallest way that's keeping us from entering into the symphony of the song, the song of songs which goes on forever. Where is it in your life that Jesus is coming to heal your misery and to bring you into wholeness and communion? And I, I, I don't want to just walk away from this and it's very easy to kind of walk away from things and kind of go on to the next thing. Can we just stop just for a second at the very end and I just want to pray, I just want the Lord to speak to you because that's where transformation is gonna take place. So Jesus, I just thank you. And I just ask for each one of us here right now that you would just reveal to us where we have come into agreement with a siren song, a song of the enemy, a song that sings a discordant note to you, Lord. I just pray right now that you'd reveal just one place to us where we've come into agreement with a siren song of destruction. And I just ask you, Jesus, you who are the bridegroom, you who sing the song of songs, what is the truth, Lord? What do you want us to know about ourselves right here? What do you want us to know about our existence? and your love. Lord, I pray this evening as you come among us that we would open our hearts to you, that you would lead us in the truth, that you would lead us in your kindness and you would sing your song of love around every place of misery in our life and that you would bring us into wholeness and communion. Lord, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your goodness and we thank you for a song that never ends. We pray glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It is good that you exist. God bless you.